Hi, good morning, and welcome to today's products in focus. US 30 there is uh, slightly recovered from uh, from yesterday's fallout as oil prices tumbled to a five and a half year low, uh, with uh, West Texas coming down to about forty seven dollars, and is almost breaking forty seven, going to forty six as we speak. Um, we have actually managed to close above potential um, support at seventeen three sixty one. Um, that was yesterday. We're still a little bit on the right side of that this morning. Um, most global equity markets are slowly grinding higher, but with a big lack of confidence to uh, to move forward, so uh, I think the pressure will certainly be on, and we do have very important um, eurozone inflation data today, which will give people a much better idea uh, as to the possibility of uh, Mario Draghi coming out on the 22nd of January um, to do the next round of quantitative easing. Now, it might be too soon, but some people think if the inflation data comes out uh, too weak, then he might not waste any time and just go ahead and get started. Um, so if that doesn't happen, on the 22nd, I think the market will react um, quite negatively uh, in the Euro regions, but also Euro dollar, where a lot of that is already getting priced in. So, anyway, 17,361 is a level to be aware of. So, moving on to the UK 100, uh, again, firmly on the wrong side of the line. Uh, 6415 is a potential resistance. The longer term potential support is quite a long bit away at 6073. Uh, there's nothing else really to report. The technicals are all quite quite neutral. Um, but as uh, you know, a large number of resource companies from the UK 100, if oil keeps on sliding, uh, UK 100 looks vulnerable, as does the Germany 30, which came off quite a lot yesterday as well. So Japan 225 um, has had quite a strong rebound this morning. Um, I think there's more uh, kind of quantitative easing aspects being touted in Japan sooner rather than later. Um, dollar yen's had a little bit of a rebound as well. It hit all the way down at 118 spot 20 yesterday, but it's back up to 119 uh, at the moment. So it's 118.20, um, around about 11 o'clock yesterday morning, uh, and it's kind of recovered ever so slightly, uh, as there's been a slight rebound in the equity markets as well. So there's a little bit of that kind of rest back on, um, but it, it feels very transitory right now. So looking at dollar yen, you'll be able to see that move right there, um, taking its head above potential resistance at 119, um, but potentially capped at 21 period SMA with the other technicals quite neutral, apart from the slow stochastic there, which still got a crossover, um, which we seem to be negative in the short term. So moving on to West Texas crude, uh, firmly um, in a downtrend still. $35 is the next potential support level. 50 has been smashed. It stayed below 50. There's not been a rebound back above that psychological round number. And oil production uh, in Russia and Iraq for 2014 um, was the highest it's been in decades. So there doesn't seem to be any change in um, the move from West Texas. But that's not to say that completely out of the blue that there might not be a cut in production. Maybe OPEC and other countries might come to some sort of agreement. You'd be very careful when trading crude. Um, especially if you're looking at it from the short side because there's any number of things that can magically come out which can cause quite a big rebound but um, certainly for now this is still firmly in a downtrend um, but just be wary of any uh, snap uh, macro fundamentals that could impact uh, West Texas and Brent. So moving on to gold, gold pushed above 118 yesterday which is the potential resistance level that we identified there uh, only to finish below it. Um, it was unable to capitalize false breakout which could have targeted 12.42. Um, obviously if the equity market sell off again um, we might get a re-challenge of that level. So looking at euro dollar um, we need to look at this on a daily basis. Again, it's all about the inflation data due today at 10 a.m. Uh, UK time. Um, expected to come in at minus 0.1 anyway, uh, which is one of the lowest that they've had since 2009. But if it comes in even lower than that, then I think everything's all in place for uh, for potential QE. But they've been saying that for way longer now than, than most analysts would have expected uh, with zero action on their behalf. So. The euro is pricing in um, potentially uh, about a QE in, on the 22nd of Jan when the ECB meet again, uh, and that inflation data will be another parcel of evidence to uh, support that argument. But people have been waiting a long time for this. Uh, I really don't think that um, they really want to do it because it's, the, it's their last uh, ace in the hole, so to speak. Um, so that inflation data today should be very interesting for your dollar. Um, we're again ticking at 118. 72, uh, a break and close below that opens up move to 116.42 on your dollar. And to finish up there with uh, with uh, cable, cable's been getting really badly smashed the last couple of days. Um, we're 
almost at 151. Uh, longer term potential support, one spot 48. And there doesn't seem to be much um, coming up that's supporting sterling in the short term uh, as the dollar continues to uh, to take full control of this FX pair. Um, in regards to the data, this is obviously the one you'll be aware of, uh, CPI flash estimate at 10 a.m. Uh, and then you've got ADB private payrolls, that's going to be big for people looking for a, a kind of a sneak peek as to what non-farm payroll is going to be on Friday. And you've got the trade balance at 1.30, so that's 1.15 and one thirty. Um, make sure you've got your alarm set for that. I've got my reoccurring alerts on there. Make sure you guys also have that. Fast forward onto Thursday, interest rate announcement from the UK, unemployment claims from the US, um, and that pretty much brings us on to Friday. Um, more Chinese PPI and CPI data, and this is going to be pretty important as well. And then obviously finishing up with um, a lot of this uh, important US data, such as non-farm payrolls and average earnings and unemployment. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.